Um, the advisor for the Center for Citizenship and Social Responsibility here at the McGlynn Middle School. Um, this is the Leadership in Athletics CCSR workshop during the summer of 2019. I'm a leader here today because I am the advisor of the CCSR. I'm a math teacher and I am the girls lacrosse coach at Medford High School. Here we have some leaders that are going to share their story along with some of the high school athletes and we're going to continue on from here and try to make this grow in the future. But I think uh, one of the most important things about being a leader is that you collaborate and you put together a strong team because you're only as good as the team you have around you and I think as athletes you certainly learn that very early. You can have one all-star and nine that aren't so good and what happens? That all-star can't carry a whole team, so it really takes the collaboration of everyone on the field to make things happen, and city government works that same way. So we have a really strong team that is working on a lot of different projects, and I feel like I'm kind of the captain of the boat, or the coach per se, and it keeps everything flowing, everything moving forward. Uh, so if you learn in your years here, especially in athletics, you do learn how respect is so important, how you treat everyone on your team, because it really is important that everyone feels the motivation. And when I think of a captain, I think of someone who motivates people. Not always the best player on the field, but the person that can connect with every other teammate. So I think that's really important. And so in City Hall, we've certainly tried to focus on that, is creating a, a camaraderie so that we all feel that we're part of moving Medford forward. My name is Nick Tucci. I'm the principal at the McGlynn Middle School here in Medford and I'm a Mustang and I want to start off by saying that because uh, I'm very proud to be a Mustang too as well and um, you know I, here as a school leader I try to build a lot of culture within the school and get people proud about who we are and what we believe in and to show people the way what I call the Mustang way and it's something that we, we preach and, and uh, loud and clear at our building and uh, we believe strongly and ultimately as the leader of the school I'm a person that needs to not only uh, preach that message but also be the role model for that message too as well and uh, I'm very hopeful that as the years go on we can continue to build a community where people are very proud of the Mustangs proud to be from Medford and do uh, what we all call the Mustang way now I'm from Medford I grew up in Medford um, and I went to Medford High School I was a student athlete at Medford High School I was a captain of the baseball team when I was at Medford High School too as well and I learned a lot of great things when I was a student at Medford High School from my teachers and my coaches and many people in the community too. And uh, one of the reasons why I think I ultimately became a leader in the profession that I chose was because I tried to surround myself by a lot of leaders. And I watched and I listened. And I just kind of surrounded myself with a bunch of people who I thought would be great role models for myself. And I think a lot of their qualities and characteristics rubbed off on me as a person and an individual and helped me reach a lot of goals that I, I actually was able to accomplish. Uh, from uh, Medford High School I was able to receive a scholarship and I went and played Division I baseball at UConn and learned a lot of great things as you know, being a student athlete at the Division I level and eventually uh, did so good that I eventually uh, signed a pro contract with the San Diego Padres. I was a uh, pitcher with the San Diego Padres too as well. And surrounded myself once again with a lot of great people within that organization and just try to pick their brains. And that's what I want to encourage you guys to do because a good leader is a person that never stops learning. Uh, good leaders are people that aren't so um, much an individual that thinks that they know it all. And you guys, as your leaders of your team, need to be the role models and embody that. And show the rest of your teammates that they're receptive to coaching. That they want to learn and seek out every single little bit of information that their coaches have to offer. Because guess what? Everybody else is watching you. Everybody else looking to you and saying, well, if my leader of my team is going to be receptive to that coaching, I'm going to be too. And ultimately, as a leader, you need to create a cohesive group of people where everybody's working towards the same goal. And as a leader, I'll talk about a couple other things and I have a little share, just a story to share with you in a few minutes. Ultimately, that's one of the challenges I want to kind of start off with you guys. Be receptive to feedback, be coachable, and guess what? People are watching you as a leader. And if you do that, I think you'll eventually develop a team where everybody pulls together in the same type of way.
So uh, I look forward to talking a little bit more about some other things in just a moment. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, my name is Jay Savetti. I'm the head football coach at Tufts. Um, I've been at Tufts in, uh, in Medford um, for 11 years now. I've been the head coach there for nine. Um, I've had a, an interesting experience as a quote unquote leader. Um, you know, sometimes I think leadership is something that uh, people anoint. And I think if I've learned anything, it's, it's something that at the end of the day is really earned um, based on your actions and based on a lot of things that, um, you know, that, uh, that we've, we've already heard already um, talked about. Just to give you a little backstory of when I took over the program at Tufts, we'd come off a one and seven season. I was the offensive coordinator of the year before. Um, came in next year, I was an interim head coach for, for the first, uh, for my first time ever as a head coach. And um, we proceeded to lose every game that season, right? Um, had a great year recruiting, a lot of support. Everybody was really excited about what was happening. We came back and we had another year that we lost all eight games, right? So uh, imagine going into year three now, you've been head coach for two years and you haven't won a game yet. Well, a lot of excitement, a lot of energy, a lot of young kids that are excited about having the opportunity to, to end the streak. Well, after year three, it didn't, it didn't end either, right? Um, and I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about who I was. And I think at the time, you know, early on in my career, I was trying to grab bits and pieces of people that um, had influenced me and had been a leader and, and a role model in my life. But at the end of the day, I realized that I had to be true to who I was. Most importantly, because the only way that I was going to be the person that our kids needed was I needed to be authentic, right? And I needed to develop um, a voice that um, resonated with the actions that I, you know, who I was, how I lived, what I did, what I spoke. Um, you know, and, and I had, there was a big transition in that third year going into you know, the fourth year and finally in 2014, we, we ended that streak. We ended a 31 game losing streak at Tufts, which was the longest active losing streak in, in the nation at the time. Um, and it's something I talk about because uh, I, I think the vulnerability and in, in the, in the experiences that I had is not just as the head coach, but also as a person, I think um, really challenged me to really think about what was important to me, right? And then even more so, what could I do with the strengths that I had um, and that, that I could then help our kids get to where they needed to get to, right? And in addition, the people that were around me, the people that I was surrounded by, what were their strengths and how could I bring them up in order for all of us as a team, right? Whether it be at the coaching level, whether it be at the leadership level, or uh, just overall us as a group, what could we do to really put a stop to this, set some standards, um, and really push ourselves beyond our comfort zone. And since then, uh, knock on wood, uh, you know, the, the class graduated this past year, uh, graduated tied for all time wins in program history. It's over 145 years of football. Um, and I'm really, really proud of, of what, what we've done there and the people that have been supportive to help us get there. Because I think that's probably the last thing I'll tell you is um, there aren't many college football coaches that can tell you they lost for three straight years and they still would have a job. Right? Uh, it took a president, it took an athletic director, and it took some really, really supportive people. So for you guys in your lives, that might be your coaches, that might be your parents, that might be your principals, that might be the mayor. Right? Um, you know, to have the mayor sitting here on a, on a Thursday morning uh, for you uh, during the summer, I'm sure her, her plate is pretty full. And for her to be committed to you guys, I think says a lot. And even more so, I think also for a principal who's you know getting ready to ramp up uh, school in a, in a couple of weeks to be here, I, I think hopefully that sends a message that people care about you and they want you to have success. So uh, it's a pleasure to be here and be with you guys. And I just wanted, if I could just jump in on one thing. Sometimes um, the Unsung Hero Award is one of like my favorites that I've seen not only throughout my kids' like high school sports, but also the professionals. It's the person that's always there working extra hard, staying late, always putting the team first, and sometimes not themselves. They're willing to go play any position because there's a void somewhere. To me, that's almost the most important award you can get, and to me, they embody leadership because they're willing to put everybody before themselves. And so I think it's really important to, to demonstrate whether you're a captain or not, is that you're committed to the whole and you're committed to moving it forward and you're willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that you do what you can to help that. And I think coaches notice people like that and they notice especially students like that and it makes a real difference and um, I think sometimes it, it equals the playing field that you're willing to work a little bit harder than everybody else to make a difference. Not oftentimes, the, the championship winning teams are not always the teams of the people who are the most talented. 
it's oftentimes the teams where people pull together for one another the most. Who has the most unsung heroes? Who's willing to do the dirty work? Who's willing to uh, get a, another team that's back? When I was uh, playing at UConn, one of, one, of, one of the first things I remember, one of my impressions was my coach walked into the locker room one day and he walked in with this big rope. And he walked in with this rope, and it's pretty common, but it, 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 uh, it really hit me hard. And a lot of football teams do this, in fact. And he cut this rope into a number of different pieces. I think it was like 30 people on the team. And he gave each and every one of the people on the team a little piece of this rope. And he challenged us. He said, I want that rope in your pocket. I want that on your keychain. I want it in your back pocket every single day. And the reason why he gave us a rope was it was a symbol. It was a symbol because he said, I want everybody to be able to pull the rope this year on our team. Meaning, um, if someone were to be, if any one of our teammates were to be hanging off a cliff to a thousand foot drop to their fall to their death, who on this team would you want if you were the one hanging off that cliff, holding that rope? Now the right answer is, you as a teammate, every single one of your teammates should be that person. But truly, think about your team. Is every single person your teammate a person you would trust with your life? They would be willing to, to feel that burn in their hands and literally you know, have that rope kind of slip away. Would you be comfortable with every single one of your teammates? Well, the answer should be yes. Because ultimately, he wanted everybody on our team to be comfortable with one another to the point where they would trust them with their life. You know, to be able to hold that rope. And he wanted us all holding the rope through the good times and the bad, through those three losing seasons at Tufts University. Who are the ones that are gonna be able to persevere? Because a true leader is a person that is uh, not always riding high and feeling good, because anybody can feel good when times are good. Who's a person that's gonna be willing to stand strong and uh, put their neck out in the line for one another when the going gets tough? Because that's a and sign of a true things, leader. Not to interrupt you, and do things when no one else is looking. Do good deeds when nobody is paying attention to Just you. You can tell the true character of yeah. a person from um, when no one's looking. I, I like actually telling that to a lot of our students here at our school. When I'm not looking, when I'm not watching, when a teacher's not watching, I wanna make sure you're doing the right thing. And as a, as a, as a coach, I want a bunch of uh, people on my team uh, going and, and exhausting the extra work in the weight room, doing the extra mile, and doing things above and beyond when no one's watching, because ultimately, that's the true testament of the team. A bunch of people that might not always be the most talented, but have each other's backs and are willing to hold that rope. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that's just something I wanted to build off of. Yeah. You know, these other leaders, um, you know, points there. I think you hopefully you can carry to your team. Yeah, the, the, the phrase that we've adopted that came through that, that time you know, it was really volition, right? You know, and, and what is volition? It's, you know, it's what are you willing to sacrifice um, of yourself for the greater good of the other people around you, right? Um, and within that, as, as a leader, and whether, you know, some of us are captains here, there are you guys all captains here, uh, maybe a future captain as well, um, you know, understand that, that that's just a title, right? That's a title that you were just given, right? Um, what it really comes down to, and you know, and the mayor obviously can speak to this more so than ever I could in, in her in her world. You know, that terror, that that title of, of mayor is is a great thing to carry and, and certainly earned and um, certainly you know voted on by the people. But understand why why did they vote for her, right? Because it starts with who she is as a person, right? Who she is as a parent, right? Who she is as a friend, right? And those are things that I think, as we're all saying, it's it's those little things that you're willing to do, right? Not just for yourself, the mayor isn't a great friend and isn't a great parent just because you know she wanted to be a mayor. Right? Just, that, those things are important to her, right? That's who she is, that's what she believes in. Thus, she gained trust from the people around them because of her actions, right? I'm sure she ran a great campaign, but I'm pretty sure she wasn't hired because of the campaign, uh, elected because of the campaign, right? Um, and, I, and I want you to think about as a leader, you know, those standards that you're setting, and are, are they really authentic and true to who you are? And really, are you a person who's really setting that standard and pushing that bar and every day representing um, what it is that's important to you and your team, right? I think developing that mission uh, and, and setting those standards and those behaviors that you need to uh, achieve and act with in order to have the desirable outcomes that you want, right? Um, I think those are the things you got to think about, right? That sacrifice is super important. One of my favorite things to talk about as a teacher, a coach, a friend, um, a sibling to my brothers is perseverance. Okay, all these stories that they just shared didn't come easy. You have to work hard. And I think what comes with working hard is sometimes there's hiccups in the road. Like as athletes, sometimes we get cut from the team we want to play on. Sometimes we didn't get the the starting position that we wanted. Sometimes we get an injury. And in the math classroom, like sometimes there is a math problem that is extremely hard. You can't just give up on. We can't get to these positions that we are today and that you are you guys are in right now 
without persevering and working hard through those challenges. And I think with that, you become stronger. You become who you are, and as Mr. Tucci was saying, is like you pick up off of those qualities from people around you, but as Jay was saying, you have to then become an individual, an individual leader. So yes, you have those qualities from the people who influence you, but I think the most effective leader is to be who you are and be an individual leader. And one of the, when I think of the word team, because ultimately you guys as leaders embody the team. You guys represent the team. You guys represent not only yourselves, but your team in Medford across your chest right there, which is really important. You carry that into different communities. Um, maybe you could, you know, as, as you think about leadership these next few days, you can unpack this acronym. When I think of team, I think of T for togetherness, E for enthusiasm, A for attitude, and M for mental toughness. Ultimately, a good team has all four of those components. Togetherness, enthusiasm, a great attitude, and great mental toughness. You package that together, and uh, you wear Method across that jersey, I know I'd be really proud to, to root you guys on, and um, I think that would really embody the Mustang way, in my, in my mind, too, as well. So just a little acronym, maybe you guys can continue to unpack later on this week. And uh, if I, if, is it okay if I throw a question at them, too, as well? Absolutely. So what do you guys think you guys could do as leaders of your team to encourage your teammates to, to hold the rope? Hi, I'm Amanda Auditore, the captain of the lacrosse team. Um, to answer your question uh, of how to get like everybody to hold the rope on a team, I think uh, you really need to like have a positive attitude and be able to communicate with your teammates very well and just make sure everybody stays on the right track. Team, I don't know if you guys have ever tried this before, was to build like a lot of team building type of exercises. You know, develop a lot of camaraderie. You know, go out together. Go eat dinner together. Go go to a movie together. You know, go to trivia night together. Go uh, hiking, go on whitewater rafting trip. I don't know. You know, these are all things that potentially you could do to develop chemistry. Because uh, oftentimes when the going gets tough, when you got to hold that rope and it's burning, ultimately you got to make sure you can trust and develop that relationship and know that that person has your back on and off the field. You know, and, and, and in your context, for you guys too as well, maybe it's a situation that might play out on social media. Maybe you're on social media at 11 o'clock at night one night, and there's something going down. And ultimately, you need to be a teammate and stand up for what you believe in and have your teammates back. It might not even be in between the white lines. It could be in a scenario like that. So think about ways that you can hold the rope and develop that camaraderie on your team where you guys will have that cohesive unit where you'll have each other's backs. Because I think those are the most effective teams. Togetherness, T for togetherness, right? And I think it expands beyond the team itself is your team of the Medford student body. So you bring those qualities outside of your teammates and into the everyday student that may not be your best friend, may not be in your, your group, but that you know something wrong is happening to them. A real leader stands up and does something about it and doesn't just watch from the sidelines. So I think it's really important to take the qualities of the team and bring it into your everyday life because you really have to be selfless. And I think one thing that I've learned as mayor is I have to put myself second and I have to do what I think is right for the, the bulk of the city. When I, when I pick projects, when I, when I do certain things, I have to look at the whole and I can't look at the little, the little, the little issue. I have to look at the big, the big picture. And that's probably the hardest thing to do sometimes because I may know you, I may know your street, your parents, people there, but I can't just focus on that street because I know them. I have to look at what's best for the whole community. And so I think as student leaders, student athletes, you have to take it off the team and really propel that into everyday life. And I think that's really the thing when no one's looking is that's when people notice is that you've got it. You know, it's in, it's in you and you're willing to go the distance to to demonstrate that fairness, equality is so important. I've had the privilege of meeting our Attorney General. She was a point guard, college hoop player. She's a little, like five feet two, I think she is. And she just has the heart of a lion. And I've heard her speak at so many different events. And she stands up for those that can't speak. And to me, you know, if there's one person that I had to say that I, I really thrive to be like every day is her. Because she's always willing to put herself on the line for those that don't have a voice and um, you know I try to do that and it's hard it really is hard sometimes but it's um, so important to really speak for those that need your help and intercede when you have to. I've, who do you guys define as great leaders? Tom Brady. Uh, yeah. Tom Brady's the easy one around here. <laughs> but why? Yeah. I don't know I just watching him like 
play and like living in New England, how seeing how he like carries his carries a team, even though some people say he's not like the best player, or, like the all that. But I just see like how he just uh, he's like leader. That's what I see him as. I think there's only one sign that hangs in the Patriots locker room, and it's from the Art of War. And it says something to the effect of, every battle is won. I wrote it down somewhere in here. Every battle is won before it's fought. Something to that effect. And I know Tom Brady embodies the Patriot way. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I know he, he is a leader because, in my opinion, he puts in a lot of the work, the extra work. Everybody sees the glamorous you know, shots in Men's Health Magazine and all these different fun things. Hang, hang out with his family and with Giselle and Tom vs. Time on Facebook. But the reality is, there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. And I think he embodies leadership too, as well. And I agree with you because he's a person that shows his team the way. And how he goes, his team goes. And oftentimes, as a leader, that's how it is. How you go as a leader, the rest of your team will go. And that's what I challenge you guys to do. Develop a following. You know, uh, be a true leader. Bring your best attitude, concentration, and effort into everything that you do, and it'll rub off on your teammates. And I know Tom Brady's had that effect along with Bill Belichick, you know, with the Patriot organization. He wasn't the first draft pick of his year, but he's gone on and he's persevered and worked hard to get to where he is today and to carry the Patriots to where they are. And even though other teams kind of put the Patriots down a little bit, he still carries his team with respect. And for the National Football League, I think he is a leader and he is an image of a leader. In fact, I wrote down a few things here just because I wasn't sure what we were walking into today. And uh, one of the things I, I thought about when I thought about leadership was Bill Belichick you know, while we're on the Patriots. And one of the lines I pulled out here uh, that Bill Belichick once said, you guys will recognize this, what does leadership mean to you? Do your job, be attentive, pay attention to details, and put the team first. What does that line mean to you guys? Uh, when you're coming up, like, pay attention to your leaders, and eventually it's going to come your time and you have to do what you have to do and you have to persevere for your team because it's not just one person doing everything it's like you said it's not just one all-star that can carry a team it's like everyone has to be a cohesive group and come together and if everybody does their job then like you can have a system that works he was a person that surrounded himself with a lot of leaders his father was a, was a college football coach uh, he spent many of his uh, hours as youth just watching his father dissecting film and doing all those things. As a, like a 22-year-old kid out of high school, out of college, he went and he hung around all these different uh, sports teams, being like a gopher, going and getting coffee. But he learned and picked each other's brains of different leaders, and he learned from them. And he's never stopped learning because when you stop learning, that's when you stop leading, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing I tell to students and, and a lot of our faculty members at our school too as well, we can never uh, lose that thirst to stop learning. Because mm -hmm. once we do, we're not going to be a very effective organization and we can't bring that cutting edge type of information. And, uh, and also develop a passion for what you believe in. Because ultimately, as a leader of your team, you've got to love the sport. And Belichick talks a lot about that. He loves football. He loves it so much, he's willing to put in those extra hours. And he basically lives there at uh, Foxborough Stadium dissecting film. So you guys as leaders need to be people that love your sport, love what you're doing, and your passion will rub off on everybody else too as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think just one of the things to think about as, as a leader is, you know, we talk about setting those standards and, you know, doing the things that you're going to require and you can't ask someone to do something you're not willing to do, right? And, and I think the thing you always got to realize is that your team will never outperform your leadership, right? So um, you have to be really mindful and thoughtful of what your expectations are um, and, and really what those behaviors are that you expect of your teammates. But I challenge you to think about, um, you know, sometimes as leaders, because we care so much about our friends, right? Because for you guys, a lot of your teammates are your friends. Um, same thing for us, same thing in the, in the, the mayor's office, you know, I'm sure it's the same thing in the in the faculty lounge, um, but at the end of the day, you, you know, there you have friends and you have teammates, right? And I think you have to you have to walk a thin line between the two, right? Friends, right, are, are people that you care about and you might go to the movies with and hang out with on the weekend, but you know, teammates are hopefully people that you hold to a standard and you push them so that they push you so that you can make yourself, uh, you know, the best version that you can be and require them to do the same, right? And one of the pitfalls, one of the things that I, I learned during that, that losing streak was I was so concerned about the people, right? I was so worried about those kids and how hard it was for losing that it wasn't that I didn't set high standards, but I don't think I set standards high enough, right? Because I didn't want my kids to fail any more than they were already on the field, right? So I started really trying to evaluate during that process of, 
figuring out what we were really doing is, is acknowledging the, the good thing. We were still doing really well in school. Kids weren't getting into trouble. They were, they were good kids. They were doing you know, uh, two-thirds of the equation. The one-third on the field, the scoreboard on the field just wasn't resembling what it needed to be. So I, I kind of flipped it a little bit and put a little bit more emphasis on the things that they were doing well so that they would have confidence from that and then use the, you know, Tufts are a bunch of really smart kids and, and use their intelligence and their savvy and their confidence that they have in the preparation that they put into their economics class or their history class and, and just applied it a little bit more towards football and set that standard for saying, hey, lo losing here is, is no longer acceptable, right? Showing up late, that, that's not an option, right? Um, so I, I challenge you guys to think about when you're setting these standards is, is don't, don't make the bar too low. I know everybody wants your friends to have success. But if you really want your teammates to win championships, you've got to push them a little bit more than, than, than maybe you might think. Okay? And, and I think the way that you protect your kids is the other part of it that I, that I learned, that you, that, you, that you keep the momentum going, is you have to build within your culture the mindset that failure is not the end. Right? Failure is another opportunity to reattack. Right? And, and if you can develop that type of conversation and that type of culture and that type of holding the rope mindset, because that's really what that is, yeah. then you'll be tough to beat. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. um, did you ever get discouraged like, as a coach or a leader during that losing streak? Uh -huh. of <laughs> you, know, you don't want to fail. Right? There are a lot of people that relied on you, a lot of people that believed in you. Right? Um, and you start questioning yourself. Right? You get yourself into a place where you don't know if you have the answers, right? You, you've, uh, three years, you exhaust all the phone conversations and mm -hmm. people you can reach out to, and that's why I think that experience for me personally of just being like, all right, well, it's your job. They haven't fired you. you this, you're not gonna go down in a sinking ship, right? I mean, you, you're gonna make sure, like, this thing's gonna stay afloat one way or another, right? And talk about the perseverance part of things. But you, you just gotta figure out what can you really be really good at, right? And how, what can you be effective at? Right? As a person, as a leader, and ultimately as a team. Um, but you know, yeah, it, that was a, being a leader is an awesome and great responsibility, but at times it's a really lonely. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it, you know, and, and, and the thing I'll tell you though is um, no, when you, you know, you need to find and surround yourselves with other people that are in the same seats that you're in, right? Because I think it's okay to share. I mean, we could probably sit here, and even though we're in three different, four different uh, experiences in our lives, I'm sure our stories would all probably have a similar kind of the, the thing that weighs us down, the thing that we try not to bring home. That you know, we're driving home, and we're like, oh my god, how am I going to fix this? Right? They're probably all pretty similar. But the one thing I'll tell you, please don't ever bring that to the people that can't help you. Right? I always say that to our kids. Like, if there's things that are bothering you, and there's things that's hard. Right? You have a responsibility to your teammates that have elected you captain, not to come in and be like, oh my gosh, coach is making us do this. You know, don't, don't be a complainer to the people that can't fix the problem for you, right? Find the people that can, right? And usually that starts with you. But yeah, it's, it was an interesting Very time. Right? Very good you know? yeah. And I think all four of us, including Mr. Dempsey behind the camera here, we're here because of, I think, a knowledge base. We've all taken the time to learn learn what we need to know to get through. We all keep on learning, which is yeah. really important. I'm a, a CPA accountant. I went to school for that and never thought I'd be mere in my life. Never was it on my roadmap of where I thought I'd be right now in my life. So you have to somehow follow the roads that come and through education and feeling like I can do it. I'm equipped to do it. Why shouldn't I do it? So that was what I had to deal with when the decision came when I, I worked for Mayor McGlynn, the prior mayor, for five years, and he, he was retiring. And I had to sit back and I had to weigh, do I have enough knowledge to do this? Do I think that I can really do it on day one when, if I am elected, if I am successful in this campaign? And why not me? So sometimes I think um, not to, a lot of women think, well, I shouldn't be the one to do that. You know, leave it to this person that's been kind of planning it for the, for the last 10 years, waiting for the retirement. No, sometimes it's just, why not now and why not me? And I am equipped to do it because I put the time in to learn. I learned about government. I was a city councilor for 15 years, worked for Mayor McGlynn for five years. I had a front seat at the table of everything that was going on in our community. And I felt like I could do the job because ultimately, you're the CEO of the city of Medford. A lot of responsibility, a lot of weight on the shoulders. 
but if you feel you are prepared and you've done your homework, and whether that be in class or on the, on the field, then you can do it. And you have confidence in yourself that you can achieve it. And achieving it isn't always a W. Achieving it is saying, I've got my camaraderie, I've got my teammates around me, we're all pushing for the same goal, we're working together as one unit, and I think that that's really important, and it's because you know, I can do it. You all know you can be captains. You all know you have that drive to put others before yourselves, and so you will succeed because you have that, it's become part of you. And um, I think it's just great spending time with you this morning. So you need to be confident in yourself, but you also need to instill confidence in the people that surround you. And I can say that sitting here, like all three of these people just inspired me and gave me confidence for what we're doing today. I know Mr. Tucci has put a lot of confidence in me for, for being a teacher and <coughs> for being a CCSR advisor, as well as Mr. Scorker and Mr. Trotta. But as a teacher, unfortunately, math has a negative connotation. And my students, I have to put confidence in them. And once they have confidence in what they're doing, they then find success. And then it then rubs off on everybody around them. So that positive attitude, that perseverance, and having confidence in yourself and in others is something that's going to put that team together, that T-E-A-M that we're going to talk I'm about. I'm Christensen. And I'm Emma McGuinn. We're seniors and part of the Medford High varsity softball team. Leadership in sports means responsibility, collaborating with others, and representing the Mustang community in a positive way. Leadership in sports means setting an example for your underclassmen and your future Medford Mustangs and showing them what it means to work hard. We'll see you at the field. Leader has integrity. Down, Group 42, set, hit! A good leader is coachable. College softball player, a coach, and also a former Medford Mustang. Leadership means sportsmanship as well. Effective leaders are Mustangs.